This is the Green Dot Review. I'm John Hyatt. We've got a special de guest today, Morty Sklar, who runs or is the spirit that moves this press here in Iowa City. We've gotten a lot of publicity in the last few months for having published the only book published in America by the most recent winner of the Nobel Prize, Yaroslav Seifert. The name of the book was A Casting of Bells. Welcome, Morty. I thought Thanks, we'd talk John. a little bit first about um, how the spirit that moves this press got started. When did you uh, get it going? A lot of issues, of special issues, and such as uh, the Actuous Anthology, but they look like books. So a lot of times people say, I haven't seen a spirit that moves this around in a long time. That's because they, they've they seen um, special issues. Mm -hmm. Now, this uh, Actuous Anthology was published in 1977, co-edited with Daryl Gray, and it's interesting, especially uh, for local people, because it has 14 poets who lived and interacted in Iowa City. It kind of summarizes really that the, period yeah. in Iowa City. Um, show us some of your other books. OK, well, uh, the most recent ones, when I start with them, uh, some people are familiar with them already. Um, this is Chuck Miller's. It's gonna. It's my last one to be published out of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Chuck Miller, local poet. Uh, How in the morning is the name of the book, and he's going to read a poem from it, uh, an Iowa City poem, in a few minutes. Let's do it right now. Okay. Good idea. Okay. This is a uh, Iowa City poem called "Cities and Years," and. Uh, the title I uh, took from a uh, Russian writer who was a uh, Russian futurist in the 20s, Konstantin Fedin. He wrote a novel, futurist novel called Cities of Years. And uh, it's about Iowa City for the most part. So, Cities and Years. City, dense as an overgrown thicket and absorbing its own humus. I push through, circulate in the veins, Taste the flow of the old blood, the back door of what used to be a tavern, the same gravel leading up to something else. Remembering when Gino lived there in some jerry-built apartment they made of it and Bert, of whom it was inferred, doing deals, certain substances now flushed away into a thousand sewers. One day Gino read me a poem entitled Morphina about a butterfly that landed on his shoulder and said, Gino is dead. This sadly beautiful and talking butterfly, this rueful spirit shaking his little butterfly head and saying, Gino is dead. And now Bert stops me on the street to tell of the tomatoes he grows in the community gardens off Old Sand Road that skirts along the river. Alleys like tunnels of fragrant darknesses, the scarred docks and refuse, as though the businesses respectable on the front streets had dropped their drawers to reveal. The same tavern now rebuilt with more fake class and the same absurd Italian name, holds old friends of sorts. We smile and exchange talk but our words will never come together again to be more than an old and lingering affection. The river with its silences alongside certain memories of the ones who have come and gone, the laughing ones because that was all they could do to shrug it off, the tragic and grotesque ones who chose some challenge to life which in its hardening it could not fulfill their darkened vision seeing the swarming under the lights as conjuries of insect instinct moth to flame. Through old neighborhoods now rebuilt and strange, then pushing my way through some weeds and down a hill, I come to a barren place, the abandoned earth ripe in its desertedness, like a small desert blooming a spring nothingness, this eloquent silence. And threading around buildings, there are walls so blank, I am content and cleansed. Doors shut and locked so tightly, death could not enter, strangely to my satisfaction. 
this history retrieve that forms these dreamlike shapes like eyes or expressions pensive rooms small green places breathing the smoke we were emanating these faint oxides now in the train yard they are building apartment houses right next to the tracks like hives for the exploited worker bees excavating my old buried secret senses i say to the workmen how they're building over my old walking place these damned apartment buildings yeah he says with contempt they're going up everywhere but then smiles because it is his work you'll have to go further out into the country and under the railroad overpass climbing the embankment to where it levels near the top where bridge and earth meet where you'd sleep if you were sleeping under the bridge and read the most private graffiti in which the slurs epithets and avowals of the new generation are penned up clit i love doris crossed out by is a whore like the rest we are the hate and contempt vermin and remember london the east end the profusion of youthful propaganda slogans china boys rule stamp out fascist scum stamp out communist scum rude girls rule okay wogs out of england and think they must make some kind of life out of this out of what we taught them and the strange ones who gave themselves to you who lay down with you in some hidden place the few you were the one for as though you recognized each other in some stranger dream beyond mortality the ones who bestowed this generosity pass a cripple girl who looks at me queerly with piteous dumb eyes and turns to look again after we're past then a shy one with small tender breasts who says hello as though offering a small and delicate flower in the haunted bookshop i find a book and read an essay on pavesa before they close a solitude sufficient unto itself death will come and he will have your eyes and find an old book by carnavali in his last memories he says oh lady death take me take me with you and i will be docile as a child and i will follow obediently in your footsteps without terror knowing you are the divine mistress and the divine gift to god i will be good and kind to all those who are going the same way i will not talk too loud and too much the way i always did in life i will merely stammer a few words in your ear cities and years sober us and austerity mounting invisibly like some autumn that is always coming finally an old house where i lived nothing but a decrepit shell now rebuilt around the dead husk inhabited by students who are drinking this afternoon as though to throw off all knowledge i show them where the old rooms used to be now utterly transformed and the rent five times as much and remember that downstairs was an old furnace sometimes in the dead of winter so much coal dust would waft up through the heat vents the air in my rooms would gleam darkly against the lights and you choose between breathing or being warm by throwing open the windows on the january fastness and letting the night come in thanks chuck i understand this is the first single poet book you've done since your famous Yaroslav Seifert book, The Casting of Bells. Yeah. Like to tell us about that? Well, I'm, I don't publish uh, much in the way of uh, single author books because I don't publish that much, just on, on the average two books a year, or two issues a year. And so I like to uh, make it accessible to um, a lot of people. A lot of people know about spirit that moves us in a sin manuscript so I don't like to limit it to one person but Chuck's book was special uh, I've known him for a long time as a great poet and a good friend 
and uh, but mainly I published him because he's a great poet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so uh, that's why, let's see, Seifert's book was in 83. And of course, Yaroslav Seifert won the Nobel Prize for Literature yeah. a few years later, and or the, the next person year, yeah. published him yeah. in the United States at that point. Right. So this uh, comes six years, uh, or five years later, and uh, there probably won't be another single author one for a little while. So did Yaroslav Seifert's tran uh, poems come over the transom or show up in the mail? Or Yeah. His translators uh, um, got me interested in them. Mm -hmm. They needed a publisher, and uh, they kind of talked me into it. Uh -huh. uh, it didn't seem like, it just seemed like another money-losing type of thing to do, publish some unknown foreign poet that no one knows. And, <laughs> and uh, anyhow, it was lucky break. Did you go back to press on that one? Did you do a second printing? Um, oh, yeah. Well, Third the first or... printing was only a 1,000 copies, and went back and did uh, three and then two more. Uh -huh. Um, and then